Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to compare some gold watercolors. I've had a numerous requests to compare the new Kurataki Gansai Tambi to the Fine Tech that I've had for a long time, and I finally got the Gansai Tambis. It took me a while to get around to this, but here they are. And they come in the rectangular pans just like the rest of the Kurataki Gansai Tambis. And I'm hoping I'm saying that right. So they come in the little rectangle pans, but they do have a cardboard box to hold them. The Fine Tech come in a little plastic case and they fit on this little base. And in order to mark my colors, what I did was stick this on the back. This is the outside packaging. So I would know exactly what the color names were for each one of these. To prep the Fine Techs, you always have to add some water and just let them sit there for a bit. You can fuss around with your brush, but it works just as well to just let it sit there for the time being while you're getting the rest of your project ready. And by the time you're done getting your paper out and everything, your watercolors should be good and soft. Now I'm adding water to the Kiritakis, but if you've used the Kiritaki before, you know they're pretty soft paints. They're not going to need a whole lot of prep work. So I'm doing this just for apples to apples, but they don't necessarily need that. You can just take your wet brush Kind of squish it around in the paint and it does start to move pretty quickly unlike the fine text. I wanted to test these colors out on both black and white so I took a piece of scrap cold press paper and on half of it I put some black Daniel Smith watercolor ground. I applied it with the Tim Holtz Ranger applicator tool thingamabob and put it on with a really nice light smooth coat and then I let it dry really well. I had masked it off with some tape. And now I'm applying the colors. I'm going down, alternating between the two of them across the chart, and you can see the labels at the top. I alternated them so that I could compare each of the pairs. The Fine Tech have been out longer than the Kiritaki, and I'm guessing the Kiritaki folks basically did a comparable color set, because most of them seem to match the same kind of colors, the same kind of gold that's in the Fine Tech. So I wanted to compare them a little bit apples to apples that way. And I'm also trying to add a decent amount of pigment so that I have about the same amount in each one so we can tell really well what the color looks like when it's you know really good thick creamy pigment. In between each of my stripes of paint, I'm actually rinsing my brush and I'm gonna save that water. So don't throw away that water. If I watercolor with that water again, another time on a different picture, I'm gonna get a little gold shimmer in everything I paint using it. So that's another fun way to add some sparkle when you're making your projects. Just save that gold water. I even reduce it down so that I have a really thick gold in, that, in the bottom of that water jar when it's all done. All right, now here is the finished piece all dried. And you can see they really do look pretty similar. I don't see a whole lot of difference between them. And you can look at this here. I'll also have a picture on my blog, but you can see better on the video what the shine actually looks like because they're really hard to take good pictures of. Now, I am not one who's really all about just a swatch of something in order to test it. I don't usually judge any product based on, let me just take a quick swipe with it. I want to try it in a real world type situation. So I'm going to try both a little bit of lettering really bad lettering but I know lots of you like to do lettering and might want to see a comparison between these colors so I'm going to show you both with some of my bad lettering as well as painting a picture with it but I'm starting with the lettering and you can see I go back and forth a lot I am not one of those beautifully smooth letterists who does some really great linear work with a brush I tend to find I do better with a pen or with a marker but here you go right <laughs> gotta try it for the sake of testing. And now I'll do the same thing with the fine text. And one of the things if you have the fine text that I want you to look at is how creamy that paint is that has been sitting in that pan. If you're if you end up with a really wishy-washy kind of color that might be why because it hasn't sat there long enough for that water to really cream up that color. So you can see there how thick and juicy that paint is and how bad my lettering is. It's kind of embarrassing even to watch this while I'm doing the voiceover. Like, did I really decide to do this? But there you go, because I want to be able to test this. For those who are folks who like to do lettering, 
On the top is the fine tech, on the bottom is the Kiritake, and I really see little difference other than the difference in my bad lettering. I did see a little more difference when I decided to do a picture. I took a stamp from My Favorite Things. This is a background stamp that works really great for people who like to color. It's a fun one to just sit down on the sofa with your Copics and have some fun with it and all kinds of really fun colors, but I decided to paint it which I will have to say now was probably not my brightest idea because it took a long time to paint this because there's just so many little pieces. I didn't worry a whole lot about staying in the lines because it was going to be all gold. And so I kind of moved into quick painting, even though this is sped up, I was still painting fairly quickly and not stressing out over the details of getting into every little nook and crevice and stuff. And filled all the colors in with a bunch of different types of these. The silver-ish color up there you don't really see very much, but the rest of the golds definitely come out quite nicely. Then I switched over to the Kiritake again Saitambis, and this is one place where I did see a little bit of a difference, and that is when you paint over top of the black lines, the paint is a little more opaque than the Fine Tech. The Fine Tech are a little less opaque than these, not by much, but you know, if we're trying to look for minute differences between them, these will just cover that a little bit more. They won't cover it so that you can't see the lines at all. They're just a little bit more opaque. And when I show you the finished one, you'll see what I mean. I almost wish I had painted the two of them together so I could get all the flowers in the same color because I'm going randomly around and I'm not gonna be able to compare them exactly flower for flower since I'm using different colors on the both of them. So we'll be looking at the overall effect rather than specifics. So on the right hand side is the Gansai Tami and on the left is the Fine Tech. And the Gansai Tami, as you can see, just covers some of those lines a little bit more. But really, you, if you just looked at these two cards, you wouldn't know the difference unless I had written down for myself that one was on the right and one was on the left. They both work very nicely. So I hope this comparison was helpful to you. At Ellen Hudson, she has a couple of the Gansai Tambis solo, so you can buy them just one color. Here's a few more videos. If you're interested in seeing a little bit more by me, you can hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. You can click to see more on the blog. There's links to all kinds of fun stuff in the doobly-doo down below. And I will see you next time. I hope you have a beautiful gold shiny day, because every day should be a beautiful gold shiny day, right? See you guys later. Have an awesome one. Bye-bye.